Logistics is an essential part of your production, whether it's the production of food, tools, or clothes. Every item that you produce has to follow a series of steps of processing, transporting, and storing until it is ready for your settlers to use. The entire process is called a supply chain, and the method that an item goes from one step of production to the next is known as logistics. This video will cover each of the logistics buildings in settlement survival to better understand their role of storage and transportation within a supply chain. So let's get started. Let's quickly review some key terms first. A supply chain is the sequences involved in the production and distribution of goods, and logistics is the transportation and storage of goods. Think of logistics as the building blocks of supply chains, and the use of logistics buildings like storages and transfer stations are what moves your goods from one step of a supply chain to the next. So it is very important to understand exactly how each of the logistics buildings work to create efficient supply chains. Let's start with the most simple logistics building, storage buildings. Storages are structures that hold goods for your settlement. Settlers carrying items will go to their nearest storage to drop off those goods, and settlers in need of items will pick them up at the closest storage that has the item that they need. The flow of items moving in and out of storages can be demonstrated visually. All settlers can take goods, like resource materials or items, and place them inside a storage. And those same goods will then be taken to various destinations, like production buildings, logistics buildings, or settlers directly in need of equipable items. You can think of items going into the storage as an input and when an item gets taken out, as the output. Having storages is essential in production, as it provides a place to store goods so it can later be taken to the next step in a supply chain. Always have storages near raw material and production buildings to give those workers a nearby place to drop off goods. Transfer stations are similar to storages. They can also be used to store goods. However, Transfer stations employ up to two transporters whose job is to try to keep the station empty by moving goods out to other storage-type buildings. The blue zone of the transfer station represents which storages will be ignored. So if you have a storage building inside that zone, transporters will skip that storage and take their goods to another nearby storage outside the zone. Any settler near the transfer station can place goods inside, so the blue zone does not determine who can and can't use it. Let's show the flow of items of transfer stations. Any settler can bring goods to the transfer station as long as it's the closest storage near them. But unlike storages, only the station's transporters will move goods out to other storages. Just remember that any storage building inside the blue zone will be skipped, and instead, it will be taken to the closest storage building outside the zone. Transfer stations are best used for moving goods to storages further away. One example is, if you have resources being kept in a storage that's far away from production buildings that use those goods, replacing that storage with a transfer station will allow transporters to move those goods closer to the production buildings instead of relying on the production workers to retrieve the items. The idea is to use transfer stations as a storage for nearby production but also as a way to be able to send those items to another storage closer to the next step in a supply chain. Supply terminals are also structures that hold items, but they work differently than the last two logistics buildings. Supply terminals employs porters, whose job is to keep the building in stock of items that are specifically designated by the players, kind of like the opposite of transporters who move items out. Porters bring items in. Then, just like a storage, any settler who needs the items in the supply terminal can take them. So a supply terminal works like this. First, select which items and how many of each will be stored in the supply terminal. 
Then, its porters will go retrieve the selected item from storages and will try to keep the terminal's inventory fully stocked. Lastly, any settler in need of the selected items will take them, much like if they were taken from a regular storage. Supply terminals are highly versatile. They can be used to bring items closer to their next step in a supply chain, or it can be used at the end of a supply chain to hold finished products for your settlers to use. For example, hoarders can bring goods that are produced further away, closer to a production building, so those workers can retrieve those goods from the supply terminal instead of a storage far away. Or, the supply terminal can hold finished trade items for your caravans so they can quickly gather the goods they are going to sell. And those are just a few ideas of what you can do with supply terminals. The delivery station, in my opinion, is the most powerful logistics building. By having dedicated workers delivering goods to production buildings, those production workers no longer need to refill their building's inventory and can just focus on producing goods. The delivery station is similar to supply terminals, but have a few more features to them. Just like supply terminals, delivery stations need to have the items it's going to store designated by the player. The delivery station employs suppliers, whose job is also to retrieve the selected items. However, the same suppliers will also have the job to deliver those items to production buildings within its coverage zone. The small and normal delivery stations function exactly the same as each other. The only difference is that the delivery station is a bigger structure, has a larger inventory, and employs up to 5 suppliers, where the small delivery station just employs 2. Let's simplify how the delivery stations work. Delivery stations need to select which goods they are going to hold, and how much. Next, it will send its suppliers to retrieve the goods. Then, those suppliers will deliver those goods to each production building in need of the selected items that's inside its coverage zone. Notice that only the delivery station suppliers can move goods in and out of the station, and not just any settler in need of the items. Just to be clear on which buildings I mean by production buildings, I'm talking about the buildings that require another resource to store in its inventory to create another item. So structures like plantations and corrals will not have fertilizer and fodder delivered to them. You can get the most out of your delivery stations by creating a new area focused around it, and by placing production buildings inside its zone, much like houses around the marketplace. I refer to these areas as production districts, and you can create districts with specific functions by placing production buildings that use similar items, like kilns and smelters, since they both use refined fuel. The final logistics building is the marketplace. This building serves as the final step of a supply chain, where finished goods like food, fuel, and tools will go. Settlers in need of those essentials can collect them here. The marketplace employs vendors, whose job is to keep the marketplace filled with essentials for settlers to take and bring home. However, if you have the delivery tech unlocked, vendors will take certain goods, like food, water, and fuel, and deliver them to settlers' homes within its coverage zone. So the marketplace works like this. Vendors will retreat finished essentials for the marketplace to hold. Then, settlers will take the items that they need and bring them back to their homes. And if you have the delivery tech, the vendors will deliver some essentials to the settlers' homes as well. Now that we have gone over each of the logistics buildings, let's see some supply chains that I have in my settlements and break down how each of the logistics buildings are working together to make production flow efficiently. Let's begin with a very simple supply chain in an early settlement and see how iron tools are being produced. Iron tools need timber and iron ore to be produced, so our supply chain starts at the timber and iron production. My forester hut is just on the outskirts of my settlement, and iron ore is being gathered manually throughout the map. I have a storage yard next to the forester hut, 
so the laborers who cut the trees down will have a nearby storage to deposit the timber. And the iron ore that has been gathered is also going to be stored here. The smithy is what produces iron tools, and the blacksmiths will need to collect the required resources to produce the tools. Since the blacksmith is also near that same storage, the blacksmith will quickly be able to collect their materials and focus more on processing them into iron tools. When the blacksmith has made enough iron tools, they will also use the same nearby storage to deposit the tools. Now we need to get those finished iron tools to the rest of the settlers. The vendor at the marketplace will now travel to that storage yard to collect the iron tools. Once the marketplace has the iron tools, they are now ready to be collected by any settler in need of new tools. That may have seemed like a lot of steps for some basic tools, but this is what goes on with every item that you produce, even if you're not aware of it. Now let's see how this same supply chain of iron tools operates on a much larger settlement. The population in this settlement is much larger, and the settlement is far more spread out but I still need to be able to efficiently produce iron tools for my entire settlement. The beginning of the supply chain remains the same, with iron and timber. This time, however, timber is coming from my forest farm, and my iron ore is coming from my mines. The mine is placed near a mountain storage, so the miners don't have a long distance to deposit the iron. However, my forest farms are further away from that mountain storage, so instead of making my forest farmers walk to the mountain storage, I have placed a transfer station nearby so the farmers can drop off the timber there instead. Now, the transporters from the transfer station will take the timber and transport them to the mountain storage, since that is the closest storage outside its zone. The next step is to get these resources into the smithy. Rather than making the blacksmith leave their job to retrieve the goods, I will place a delivery station nearby so its suppliers can retrieve the resources and bring them back to their station. When the blacksmith is running low on resources, a supplier will refill their inventory by delivering the resources to the smithy. The blacksmith will still need to deposit the finished tools on their own, so I have another storage near the delivery station for all of the nearby production buildings to use. Lastly, a vendor from the marketplace will travel to this storage to bring the tools back for settlers to use. The addition of transfer and delivery stations may have added extra steps to the supply chain, but when your settlement is larger in size, dividing each step with specialized logistics buildings allows each worker to have simpler jobs with shorter walk distances. It's better to have workers either only transporting or producing goods, then making your production workers share the responsibility of logistics as well. Let's quickly do one more example, but using a supply chain that uses all of the logistics buildings in a single chain. In this settlement, I am providing salted meat for my settlers to consume, which needs meat chops and salt. This supply chain starts with any raw meat and salt. The raw meat comes from my pastures and the salt comes from the salt mines. Herders will deposit the meat they get to a nearby cellar, and some pastures that are further away have a transfer station that transports the goods to that same cellar. The raw meats will first need to be processed into meat chops by the butcher shop before being processed into salted meat by the curing shop. However, both the butcher shop and the curing shop are on the other side of the settlement from the pastures, so to efficiently get the raw meats closer to the butcher and avoid production workers traveling the long distance, I'm going to place a supply terminal near the production buildings and designate it to hold various raw meats. Those porters will now go to the cellar near the pastures and bring the raw meats back to the terminal. Just like the last settlement, a delivery station is providing resources to its production buildings. The delivery station suppliers have a nearby supply terminal to bring the raw meats back to their station. Those same suppliers will deliver raw meats to the butcher shop, and the butcher will take the meat chops to a nearby cellar. Meanwhile, the salt will have a much shorter journey. 
The salt workers only need to deposit the salt into that same cellar before it is taken back to the delivery station by suppliers. Now that we have salt and meat chops ready, the suppliers will bring the goods to the curing shop to finally process into salted meat. When the salted meat gets deposited in the cellar, a vendor will go retrieve the goods and bring them back to the marketplace and deliver them directly to a settler's home because of the active delivery tech. And that is the complete breakdown of a salted meat supply chain. At first, this can all sound very intimidating, and that's okay. But practicing how to use these logistics buildings one at a time in your smaller settlements will help you get familiar with each of the building's role in a supply chain. Just remember that the goal is to keep travel times to storages, production, and logistics buildings as quick as possible so your production workers can focus on increasing productivity. As your settlement grows in size, so will the distance between each production building, and it's up to you to decide which logistics building you would need to get your resources from one step of the supply chain to the next. I really hope I explain logistics and supply chains well. It can be a very complex mechanic in settlement survival. Please feel free to ask any questions about this topic in the comments below, and I will try my best to answer. If you enjoyed this guide, make sure to subscribe to get notified for future uploads as soon as they go live. Also join my Discord to ask me any questions about the game directly, and to keep updated with my future content. Thank you for watching this episode of In Case You Didn't Know, and I hope to see you on the next video.